talk a little bit about snakes. And while I'm not a snake expert, I was in the Marines for four years, and as part of that four years, I was um, in the field pretty often as part of an infantry unit. And we were deployed in places like the Philippines, Guam, Tinian, Saipan, and uh, all pretty much places known for having a good snake population. One of the things that's interesting about that is that in the time that I was in the Marines, I probably saw a snake once, and not one person in our unit was ever bitten by a snake, which tells you that snake bites are pretty rare, but they do happen. So what we're going to do is show you today a couple of things that you can do to try and avoid getting bitten by a snake, and that's pretty much the uh, objective of this video. One of the things that you need to know about snakes is that the reason why it's so rare that you would be bitten by one is because they try to avoid you. They have no interest in what you're doing and usually they're not um, offensively going to try and attack you while you're on a, on a trail. Because they're down on the ground, what they do is as you're walking along the path with a firm footstep, they're going to feel the vibration of you coming along the path and if they're anywhere near the trail, they're going to move into the bush. That's where you're going to find your snakes. So this is a perfect trail, what we're on right now, to give you an example of where you might find a snake and what to do to avoid it. Snakes are cold-blooded animals. So what's going to happen is during the, the nighttime, their core body temperature gets really low. So in the daytime, they're going to come out onto something like this, which is in the sun, it's nice and warm, and they're going to bring their body temperature up. Now, the thing about that is, is then they might be on the trail. So what you want to do is, when you're walking, make sure that you always have a stick in your hand. You're placing that stick in front of you. You're walking with a firm footstep and you're making vibration. That way the snakes know to get off the trail. Um, now, once their core body temperature warms up, what they're going to do is go into the shade. And so this is a perfect example of an area where you might find snakes. It's by a warm source, like uh, a trail or a uh, reflective source like a large rock might be another area where you'd find a snake. <clears throat> but then they're going to retreat into the shade as that body temperature gets hotter. And so they'll spend most of the day in the shade. So one of the things that you want to do is avoid these shady areas next to trails. So if you're going to stop on a side of a trail, you probably don't, you want to look around first, maybe not be near the roots of a tree or near an area where there's bushes that a uh, snake might be hiding. Now, if you encounter a snake, and usually, for instance, in California, the most likely uh, snake that you would encounter would be a rattlesnake. That's going to be your, your largest threat. What you want to do is you want to stop what you're doing. For instance, a, a typical scenario would be that you would hear the rattle. Now, oftentimes you're not going to see the snake. You're going to hear the rattle first. So what you want to do is freeze, and you don't want to move until you locate that snake visually. Once you've located the snake, you want to back away slowly from the snake, moving backwards, keeping your eye on the snake. You don't want to turn your back to the snake because it could strike. Case scenario, you're walking along a trail, you've startled a snake because, again, they're not going to come out and just attack you. The only time a snake's really going to bite is if it feels backed into a corner or if it's startled. Some of the ways that that could happen is if you're walking and stepping over a log. Now, as we discussed before, a snake is going to have, um, be trying to warm itself usually during the daytime. It might be up against a reflective surface like a log. So when you walk up against a log or, as, you know, basically any kind of obstruction, you want to step on top of the obstruction and look over to see if there's any snakes in that area and then step down first. One of the main ways that people get bit by snakes is by stepping over logs and different types of obstructions. If you just step over the obstructions, you could startle the snake and he'll strike. Now, um, with snake bites, <clears throat> you have a 25% chance with a venomous snake that it's going to be a dry strike. And what a dry strike means is that they do not release any venom. You're not its prey, so and it realizes that, and it might 25% of the time not release venom. So don't panic. It's very important if you're struck by a snake not to panic because you don't want to get your blood pumping faster to move the venom. Um, either it's going to be a hematoxin or a neurotoxin type venom through your bloodstream. The first thing that you want to do, and again, I'm not a medical expert, but and you want to read about this before going out or seek the advice of a doctor before going out into the wilderness. But just basic kind of common sense things is you'll want to tie a light tourniquet between the wound and your heart. So 
if you're bitten on your calf, you're going to want to go ahead and tie a tourniquet between the bite wound and your heart. And we're not talking a tight tourniquet here. We're talking sort of a um, enough just to restrict the blood flow, but not stop the blood flow. If you stop the blood flow, you can run into some serious problems with that limb. So um, what you're trying to do is slow the progression of the venom through your bloodstream. Um, you don't want to do things like you've seen on television, which is to cut the wound or to um, try and suck the venom out of the wound. It's um, usually a, very, a kind of gelatinous substance, and you don't want that venom inside of your mouth. Getting venom inside of your mouth with your capillaries open is just going to speed the venom right through your bloodstream even faster. So tie the tourniquet and call for help. Basically, if you're in a situation where you have to hike out, hopefully you have somebody with you or use a stick to um, help you and keep the uh, weight off of that wound as much as possible. So from readyhiker.com, that's a little bit on snake bite. We encourage you to research um, anytime that you're going out into the uh, wilderness to find um, as much information as you can so that you're prepared for any emergency. And above all else, be a ready hiker.